بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم جس میں شمال اکادر hope you all are fine today we have our topic glycogenolysis as the name indicate glycogenolysis it is the lysis of glycogen means breakdown of glycogen as I told you in the lecture of glycolysis that glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose whereas in case of glycogenolysis it is the breakdown of glycogen to its monomer that is glucose so what is the definition of glycogenolysis the breakdown of glycogen to glucose is called glycogenolysis before going the process of glycogenolysis first of all have a review of glycogen glycogen is a principal storage form of glucose in our body that is also called animal starch whenever there is excess of blood glucose it is stored in the form of glycogen in our liver or skeletal muscles and where there is required requirement of glucose in the blood under the influence of certain enzyme the glycogen is broken down releasing its monomer that is glucose the structure of glycogen is composed of monomer of glucose it is a polymer of glucose residue which is linked by glycosidic bond it is branch homopolysaccharide that has monomer of glucose homopolysaccharide means same monomer that is here glucose and these glucose moieties are attached with each other by two type of linkages alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkages and alpha 1,6 glycosidic linkages alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond are mainly present whereas alpha 16 glycosidic bonds are present at the branching point as you can see in the structure one four linkages are there one carbon of one glucose and four carbon of other glucose moiety are attached by with glycosidic linkage and both of these type of linkages are alpha 16 or 14 linkages why because the hydroxyl group which are involved in the bond formation is below the plane of paper so that is why it is alpha 14 glycosidic linkage or alpha 16 glycosidic linkage in 16 glycosidic linkage you can see one carbon of one sugar moiety is attached with six carbon of other sugar moiety and making the branch or branching point of glycogen structure glycogen storage as i told you that for whenever you take carbohydrate the excess the excess glucose glucose is stored in the form of glycogen in the liver or skeletal muscle muscle glycogen is responsible to provide quick source of energy whenever it is required whereas the liver glycogen is basically the reservoir of glucose for other tissues and act to buffer the blood glucose if there is low glucose blood glucose level so it break down or by the process of glycogenolysis glucose come to the blood to maintain the blood glucose level for different type of functions three basic type of enzymes are involved in the process of glycogenolysis glycogen phosphorylase glycogen debranching enzyme or it is generally called debranching enzyme which perform two type of functions these two enzyme action associated with debranching enzyme that is 1,4 or 
ग्लूकेन ट्रांसफरेज एंड अमाइलो अल्फा वन सिक्स ग्लूकोसाइडेज एंड द थर्ड इंजाइम फोस्फो ग्लूको म्यूटेज द इंजाइम फोस्फोराइलेज इज इनिशियटिंग द प्रोसेस बाई बाय द क्लेवेज ऑफ एल्फा वन फोर लिंकेज दैट इज ग्लूकोज वन फॉस्फेट This enzyme is present in both liver and muscles, and both has active and inactive form and are interconvertible. The active form in the liver is the phosphorylated form, that is, phosphophosphorylase, where the inactive form is the dephosphorylated form, so called. D phospho phosphorylase. The muscle phosphorylase also exhibit both state active and inactive and are in interconvertible. Active form is phosphorylase A and inactive form is phosphorylase B. Now come towards the step of glycosylases. See the figure A, where glycogen structure. is composed of different glucose moiety that are represented by different numbers and two type of linear chain are attached or making a branch at glucose uh, 15 of glycogen structure with glucose 3 of other linear chain and it is attached the whole structure is attached with glycogen 4 that contain a glycoprotein glycogen first the enzyme phosphorylase start its action it cleavage the 1,4 glycosidic linkage of uh, glucose moiety from non reducing end and it releases one by one the glucose moiety as glucose 1 phosphate molecules and the process is continued till the four glucose moiety remain at each side of branch as you can see in figure b that at the branch side four glucose moiety are present and the rest of these under the influence of enzyme phosphorylase leaf the structure and all one by one make glucose one phosphate molecule now in the second step debranching enzyme starts its action which perform its two action first the enzyme one four glucane transferase detach glucose 18 to 16 three glucose moiety from glucose 15 and attach with glucose 6 which is represented in figure c but still the glucose 15 is attached with glucose 3 making the branch that is alpha 16 glycosidic linkage now the specific debranching enzyme that is amylo 16 glucosidase cleavage this One six linkage and release three glucose moiety. Now again, splitting is start under the influence of phosphorylase enzyme and remaining glucose moiety in the chain representing in the figure D e will be released. Now C. one by one the step how it is going on phosphorylase which is the first step and it is rate limiting step an enzyme phosphorylase is involved in this step of glycol uh, of glycosylases this enzyme after activation in presence of inorganic phosphate cause cleavage of glycoside alpha 14 linkage and removed by the phosphorylated cleavage 
one poor glucosyl residues from outermost chain of the glycogen molecule until approximately four glucose residues remain on either side of a alpha 16 branch that is limit dextrin as here the figure a shows a straight chain of 14 glucose moieties 1 to 14 and that is attached to glycogen core through unit 1 that is glucose 1 and another straight chain of 12 glucose moieties is attached with first linear straight chain of glucose moieties with glucose 3 and thus make a branch which is between 15 glucose and open glucose moiety chain and three glucose of other glucose moiety chain after the phosphorylation by enzyme phosphorylase four glucose moieties are here attached at each branch site and the branch is 16 glycosidic linkage what happened the phosphorylase start its action from non reducing ends of both chain and thus releasing glucose as glucose 1 phosphate the black circles which is represented in this figure and one by one the glucose units are released and the action of the enzyme is stop approximately when four glucose moieties are left at the branching site here it is to be noted that glucose which is released by the action of phosphorylase is not free glucose rather it is glucose one phosphate and when the four glucose residues are left from the branch point then the debranching action is started so the enzyme one four glucane transferase transfers a three glucose containing unit from one side to the other side and thus it causes or it exposes the branch point that is alpha 16 glycosidic linkage the detach unit is attached with the other straight chain of glucose moiety that contain 1 to 6 glucose moieties three units of clave branch that was clave from 15 glucose is attached with this chain and now it has become a straight chain of glucose moiety but still here branch point is present this this 15 glucose and 3 glucose attachment or the branch required debranching enzyme which is a specific debranching enzyme to 16 glycosidic linkage and here now hydrolytic splitting of alpha 16 glycosidic linkage is occurred by the specific debranching enzyme that is amylo 16 glucosidase as it is hydrolytic splitting so one molecule of free glucose is produced rather than one molecule of glucose one phosphate as was in case of phosphorylase so by the second action of debranching enzyme the one cyclic linkage is broken down 
and release glucose 15 as free glucose. Now the action of phosphorylase again is started and as there is no branching site which can stop its action, so the glucose moiety from 1 to 18, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and the attached 3 glucose moiety that is 16, 17, 18 all will be released. But here it is all, all of them are released as glucose 1 phosphate molecule. Now what happened in the next, which is also the significance. This glucose 1-phosphate has to convert to glucose 6-phosphate. And this action required phosphoglucomutase. This enzyme convert glucose 1 phosphate to glucose 6 phosphate and this is a reversible reaction. Next, in the liver and kidney, another enzyme that is glucose 6 phosphatase is present which can remove phosphate group from glucose 6 phosphate and thus release free glucose which can easily diffuse from the cell to extracellular spaces or in the blood and this is supposed to be the last step where glucose or free glucose is formed from glycogen but this enzyme is specific to liver. In muscles, the enzyme glucose 6 phosphate, the enzyme glucose 6 phosphatase is not present. So glucose 6 phosphate has to enter glycolytic cycle and form pyruvic acid or lactic acid. That is why the muscle glycogenolysis does not contribute to blood glucose level directly but indirectly the form lactic acid can go to glucose formation in the liver as I told you in the class of uh, glycolysis first is converted to pyruvic acid and then it will lead to the formation of glucose in the liver. So students, this was this is all about today's lecture. I hope you got understood. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.